Hello, I'm Pete Matthews, President of District Council 33. The election on November the 3rd is very important to us. That is why I want you to watch this video which features City Council President Darrell Clark and our candidate for mayor, Jim Kenney. Listen to what they have to say. This is why we are endorsing them. And what they're about is they're about the community, which we are a part of. They're about our schools, which our kids go to. They're about working people. They know what happened in the past five years. You see the fights that he had down city council. Nobody in council supported him. But it's a new day if we go and get the vote out. That's what we got to do. We got to get the vote out. So, Daryl, Jim Kenny, come up to the stage today. Let's give him a big round of applause. Some people have forgotten what it's like and forgotten the responsibility of elected officials, right, to make sure that we continue to be strong for the families. And I like to say I'm excited today that we have a person who's going to be strong for the family. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Issue with respect to the Supreme Court. Because, Tim, you know, we're going to win. Yeah, I might see a free election, y'all know that? <laughs> y'all ain't nobody running against me. But I'm saying, the reality is, we won't win. The question is the margin of victory, right? <laughs> but the reason why the margin of victory is important is because of the statewide race. And I know you just had three Supreme Court candidates up here talking. Mm -hmm. This is some serious stuff, folks. Yep. When you talk about people trying to take away the rights of the unions, people trying to take away your right to vote. That wasn't too long ago, remember that? Yeah. See if you had to get some little ID, right? The lady coming to the vote, been coming to vote for 60 years. They said, well, you're not show ID. Seriously, right? That's the importance, folks. This issue with respect to education, there's going to be something on the Supreme Court docket coming up real soon on everything that you care about. So I, I don't have to stand here and tell you all to vote. Because you won't vote. If you didn't, weren't going to vote, you wouldn't be in here tonight. But the simple reality is that you have to multiply the numbers in this room by five. Pete was right when he talked about 50,000. That 50,000 now, with the dwindling out turnout, is actually a higher percentage than it used to be. Because a lot of other people, these young folks, they don't want to vote, right? Whatever. That means that your vote counts even more. So it's very important. So before I made, before I made that public decision that I wasn't going to run, I had to feel comfortable that there was somebody out there that I can give 100% support to. And that was Jim Kenny. Because we're going to do some special things in the city of Philadelphia. Right. So, I just want to say, because I'm excited about the future of the city, I'm excited about the direction we want to take, I'm excited about the ability that you all are going to have a friend on the second floor. And guess what? I'm going to have a friend on the second floor. <laughs> I'm excited about that. So. Huh? Yeah, you go this way. Yeah, and you know what? That Harrisburg stuff. You know, you heard men, you know, running up to Harrisburg all the time about the state money. Jim and I are gonna go in the same car. Yeah. We ain't gonna be sneaking up there. I'm gonna get the camera first. We ain't doing that. Same car. All right. So, folks, I just want to say, first of all, thank you all so much for the support that you have given us over the years. You have been there when nobody else was. And I want to say thank you for your support for the city of Philadelphia. And we're going to ask 
We're going to do what we have to do. We're going to get this vote out. We're going to shock people. We're going to take over not only the, the second floor, we're going to take over the state Supreme Court. Yeah. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I like to say that, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Thank you for the board. Thank the members here for all their support. The primary it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming. My father was a firefighter. He was a firefighter, filled the fire department. Fred, the retired as a battalion chief. He was a union firefighter. My mom was a union employee. My brothers, the union employees, are teamsters. I had my first union card at 17, washing dishes in a restaurant. Uh, and it was the kind of work that taught you how to deal with people, taught you how to be humble, it taught you how to understand that you're no better than anybody else. You put your pants on the same way every day hey. like everybody else. Yeah. 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 I, was a union, I was a union bus boy, I was a union bartender, and in college I worked for AFSCME 1199C as a, as a head, unit clerk, not unit clerk, an information desk at Einstein Hospital in South Philly. I worked my whole life. My parents, my, somebody said my mother and father, my best alarm clock. Get out of bed and go, 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 go do something. So we had nothing handed to us, but we were happy with what we had. My, we had a roof over our head, we had food, I had an education, we had a car, we had a week in Wildwood because my father was a union firefighter and had benefits and had and had the ability to take us down the shore for a week, which was, was wonderful. I mean, you know, people living on the, living high, living high on the high, we thought we were living high on the high, getting on the Wildwood boardwalk for a week was wonderful. But I have not forgotten and can't forget where I've come from. I mean, I came from the, my grandfather attended bar for 45 years in South Florida. Uh, my grandparents, you know, we're, we're staying home moms, my grandmothers. But, but it, was, it was what that neighborhood was. And every person in that neighborhood benefited, who had a good life, who had a good opportunity. The only reason was because their parents had some affiliation with organized labor. Whether they worked for the city of Philadelphia, whether they worked for, whether they were teachers, whether they, whether they did, whatever they did that had an affiliation with the labor union, you were assured that your benefits and your working conditions and your life would be better, and your ch more importantly, your children's lives would be better. And it's right, we've been talking about it a lot tonight, there's a lot of people in this country who want to take that away. It's interesting that I will become, if lucky, the 99th mayor of the city of Philadelphia, and I will be for the 99%, not for the yeah. 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 I'll tell you something about your leader here, because he has a hard time expressing his opinion. <laughs> He's already called me up at least twice to chew my butt out <laughs> on a couple things in the paper that were not reported appropriately, but uh, he sent me straight quickly and we came to an understanding. Because let me tell you the thing that we're going to have differently than you had in the last eight years. You're going to have respect. You're going to get a fair contract. We're going to negotiate face to face like human beings. And the thing I learned over the years in being in council is you know something about what you're doing in your job. Privatization sounds good all the time. Numbers are always good in the first couple of years. And all of a sudden we have, well, we didn't calculate that, and we didn't open, and it winds up being more expensive than it was if you just let the workers do it. We need you. We need you to be enthusiastic, to collaborate, to innovate, to want to work with each other, work with other departments. Give us your ideas. You're smart. You have something to say. You have something to contribute. You've done your job for a long time. Many people in this room have done their job for a long time. They know, they know the mistakes that have been made over the years. They know, in an effort for us to do the right job and to do it the right way, we need to talk to you. We need to communicate with you. We need to respect you. You are our work for every private sector company in the country, in the world, has a wonderful relationship between its management and its labor force. Every single one, whether it's Europe, whether it's United States, every single one, the management and labor get along. They have, they have interaction, they have discussion. And that's what you'll have from me, the respect. And I can tell you, the two gentlemen standing here, council president and your leader, if ever I stray, you know who's going to put me back on the right path. And I'm not going to stray. But you know, no one's perfect. And sometimes you're going to have to be told that it's not that way, it's this way. I mean, we're, going to, we're going to deal with it. We're going to work it all out. We're going to work it all out. We're all city residents. We're all paying taxes. I mean, it's not like they act like you're not a taxpayer. Right? It's like crazy. That, you're, going to have, you're, going to have a new, you're going to have a new era of relationship. And let me tell you finally, when it comes to turnout, and this is why I don't understand, I don't have an answer for it. Selma, Birmingham, they mean something. People got lynched and shot and beat 
and sick dogs on them and water cannons and lives ruined and jobs ruined and businesses ruined simply for the right to be full-blooded Americans, to vote and have a place they want to live where they want to live and work where they want to work. You know, when people have to get up off the couch to go to the rec center to vote, they ain't walking across the end of Pettus Bridge. They ain't meeting those stormtroopers on the other side. They're just going to the rec center or library to vote. And if we don't honor that sacrifice, if we don't honor that American history, we're, we're really letting those folks down. Because not only is it African American history or African American, we're all standing on their shoulders. We are all we are all better and freer than we were before they made those sacrifices. And we have to honor that sacrifice by getting everyone out to vote, by teaching our young people the history of this country, the real history of this country, not that white sanitized version of the of the history of this country, the real history of this country and make sure that we uphold their, 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 what they stood for and the sacrifices that they made. So I want to thank you very, very much for the confidence you've shown in me, for the things that you do for the city, for the jobs that you do for the city. Every single day, we're not going to let you down. We're going to respect you, and we're going to work together to make our city a better place. Let's go forward and do this. Thank you.